Missy. Hey, Jess. Hey, everyone listening. Welcome to Reservations. Mm. How is everyone today? How are you today? I am super. I'm. This is like a pet. It's really a vet at my house today. I'm taking care of three crazy dogs. But what I wanted to talk to you about, and the reason I told you that is because I have one in lockdown with me right now. So if he starts to chew off his special boot or his special hoodie or his special whiplash neck brace that keeps him from licking anything or scratching anything. Oh um, that's, Ugh. yeah, that'll, that'll make, uh, uh, that'll make us crazy with the sound. Oh, it's so much fun. I'm a prisoner here in this it. house. I already hate it. Yeah, I'm a prisoner. You are. Um, but I, I wanted to tell you that the funniest thing happened yesterday when it's actually two days in a row now. We had talked about dinner. And how dinner is just this sore spot for us. And oh, God. How... Yes. So I don't cook really per se. I prepare and occasionally I'll cook, but mostly it's eating out or, as you said, bringing in. Mm-hmm. So two nights ago, Stuart yells upstairs, Mallory, time, my daughter, time for dinner. And she yells back, Where are we going? <laughs> Which normally, for in a normal house, I mean, that's ridiculous. That in is, our house, in my house growing up, that would have been ridiculous. Right, right. And here, I mean, normally here, it, that's, that's an acceptable question because odds are we're going out. But I cooked and, and Stuart yelled up, the kitchen, like the table, the counter, wherever we're eating here. And she just came down so confused. So last night I did it again. I did some crock pot meatballs, Mm -hmm. my favorite noodle shape, the cavatappi, which just, I don't know why it just makes me so happy. Cavatappi. So wait, for for the audience, isn't that the tube with one fat end and one skitty end? Like a seashell, but um, longer, right? No, it's a curl. It's a. It's like my hair and your hair without extensions. And now, um, cavatappi. Oh, it's yeah, it's an a, extended it's a macaroni. Squirrely. Yes, but it's curled. Yes, right. It's, it's a macaroni, it's, but mm-hmm. extended. The extension, and like it, my hair, extension macaroni. Yes, <laughs> pretty sure I said that. Um, extension macaroni. Right. Okay. So I don't know, but the texture is perfect. Yes. It yes. Take, ugh, it's They're the best for your pleasure. Yes, yes for, pleasure. for my pleasure. Yes, Exactly. Yeah. So I, I make this, I get a, I get a salad, I get added things for salad. I've got mushrooms and tomatoes and cauliflower. I've broken everything up and I'm all excited and I yell, kids, <laughs> dinner. And again, without fail, where are we going? And now you're are getting you insulted. Like, I'm trying and I can't win. Like, I just can't win. Well, why start now? I mean, as far as your kids are concerned, how are they supposed to know you're trying? Well, I'm partially a um, a victim. I'm, I'm captive here in the home as I have to keep my dogs from A, killing each other and B, chewing their legs off to get to their stitches and staples and open that bloody how mess. How many of been... them? Wait a minute. How many of them have stitches and staples right now? Okay, so three out of the three, three dogs. One has had things removed, so he has stitches and staples, and he can't scratch them. But he's also the dog who fights with dog number three mm-hmm. or two, however you look at it. So I have walked into a room after coming downstairs at night to let them out their final time, mm-hmm. and found. They hear me coming. The old dog is sleeping like a rock, freaks out and jumps up and attacks the dog who has a plastic neck brace. Um, so when by the time I get down, down there screaming, there's a puncture in that dog's ear. Oh, you know, there's dog sake. blood again, not from any of the previous scr- scratches, scrapes or staples or sutures. Wow. Um, but but it's, it's – um, uh, I need to be taking some of the meds that – our oldest dog is taking. He takes trazodone in the morning, which you would think will kind of knock him out a little. It, he's like a brick wall, does nothing. And he takes um, a Prozac at night. Melissa, what does that say so, about you as a pet says owner? I should probably give them together. <laughs> Stop. He's a puppy mill rescue who 
Yeah, he's messed. He's really, he's really messed up. He's and depressed I, and suicidal, it sounds like. No, he's homicidal. If he were suicidal, oh, look, right. Jess, when I do You're get right. to leave the house, when I do get to leave the house, I look at both of those standard poodles right in the pie hole and I say to them, look, finish the job. Right. If you're going to do it, finish the job. I'm tired of vet bills that have a comma in them. Oh, Please just finish God. the job. I can't live like this anymore. I'm a prisoner. Yeah. I'm a prisoner. You are. You're so. a prisoner of your own kindness. Aren't we all really? <laughs> are we all? Aren't we all a prisoner of our own kindnesses? I think the answer yes. is yes, regardless of who you're kind to. Anyway, so you can't win because you can't leave the house. But back, so back to dinner. So they say where we're going, and you say nowhere. I made meatballs, bitches. And then what? Yeah, they they moan. So I, I got to tell you, these meatballs were really good. And and my son, Are they Italian. What did you put on them again? Well, it was that mixture of meat. It's got the veal. It's got the. No, no. But what sauce? The meatball is not as important as the sauce. You've got Obviously. to be kidding. The texture of the meatballs, everything. But yes, the sauce is from a jar that I doctor with my own. Which not jar? so, not so. I don't want to tell you. I use ragu sometimes. You can tell me. No ragu is gross. I use the. Ah, the new one. The organic one is nice. What do you mean? It's not. All right. So in our house, we kind of like a sweeter sauce. So I get oh. the Francesco Rinaldi. The. Um, oh, yeah. The sweet and tangy, sweet and tangy sauce, yeah. sweet and something yeah. sauce, and it is it is good. But I mean, I I use that crock pot. I put wow. some egg and Italian out. Italian breadcrumb seasoning stuff. So, like I used, I. I mm-hmm. You made the meatballs from scratch. You don't buy frozen meatballs. I I think that's kind of what I'm telling you. I had fat all over my hands for like ten minutes because oh I couldn't get it off. It was, and it reminded me why I don't cook because I made chicken the night before and I'm cutting off, ugh, ve- ugh, ugh, what's that yellowy white stuff that you have to fat, fat but just not just fat. It's like got cartilage in there. Like there's sketchy stuff in there. So <laughs> so I'm cutting all of that off. I'm working hard and my son comes down and loves the meatballs. My daughter takes about eight cavatappies. What's the plural for yeah, cavatappi? Cavatappi? Yeah. Cava- she right. takes like eight of them on her plate and a lump of butter. And I think, I'll beat go to your you. room. Yeah. Go to your room. I said, I said, there better be a huge salad on your plate if that's, if that's what you're doing to my dinner. A huge salad. So she had a little bit of salad and then later asked for dessert. Because that's how I've taught them mm-hmm. to roll. Mm-hmm. Just as important as your salad is your dessert. Mm-hmm. Well, so did you Gross. give her any or no? Look, <laughs> don't judge me. Oh. We've discovered Talenti. Do you know what Talenti is? Yes, I know what Talenti is, girl. So we have discovered Talenti in our house. Mm, so and good. the worst part is opening it the first time because it's a screw cap yeah, cover just, yep. and it's frozen it's really hard to get into and it when is. you really it's when you really want it why and do they make it so frozen i don't know but don't think for a second that we haven't written to talenti to, to tell them of our issues just microwave it for like 10 seconds you'll be is good that, we have to i have to microwave ben and jerry's to get into that and that's after it's open oh that's we all did the is. dance we put on a towel like a glove a towel we did everything we could to get in there and I, I guess when motivated, you know, Talenti is a wonderful motivator. But yeah, she did get yeah, dessert. Not a lot, but she got some dessert. That stuff is amazing. Ugh, can't get enough. I was going to ask you something about your meatballs. Oh, the sauce. We buy Victoria, like we buy a more fancy sauce, but then Scott still doctors it sometimes. Or I can doctor a ragu just as well as any Francesco Rinaldi. Well, how do you like your sauce? What do you like about it? He likes it a little more sour. I like it slightly less sour, but not too sweet. Hmm. So r- ragu comes sweet already. I mean, so that's why we buy the organic one. I was raised on ragu. Mostly we buy like the Victoria and the, what's the one? San Marzano for the tomatoes and Silver Palette. Like I buy a more expensive sauce. It's almost like you're speaking a different language to me right now. <laughs> Like I hear your words, but put together 
with meaning, meaning is absent. I've got nothing. You've never heard of these brands of sauces? I've got nothing. They're more expo- uh, because they're not cheaper because I figure if I'm going to stay home and make something, it may as well taste like I did go out. I've been in the aisle at Wegmans and none of those sound familiar. They- well, Victoria is definitely there. Anyway, my favorite noodle, I think, is the um, the penne. I like the penne pasta. Stuart likes that. It's delicious. I do like it, I have to say. Yeah, but you also have to cook these slightly al dente, which makes them yep. even more delicious and texture. Oh, my and God. Kids... You put a picture of Cavatappi in the friggin' show notes, I just noticed. I didn't. I thought you did that. I didn't do that. John must John. have done it. <laughs> you can't see, but I'm raising my fist to the sky. John! Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, That's so I actually am figuring out what the hell – I forgot that my friend and I are going to the melting pot tonight because I was just like, oh, what do I make for dinner? I just buy meat and hope for the best. I have no plan for any of it. I don't know. I mean we have so much sauce and stuff in the pantry that like I don't even – I this is my problem with it. So I bought like – I bought a big thing of Purdue chicken breasts, but they're like individually wrapped by twos. So I figured I'd open it and just put them in the freezer two by two so that if I was wanting to make something, I could just pull it out and the three of us could eat two it. Two by two. What but, song is that? Two by two. No idea. I won't sing. Oh, I don't know. Crap. What is it? Oh, it's from the Book of Mormon. Sorry. Oh, just I've never came seen that. Oh, see? <gasps> Jessica. Shame on you. I know. I've wanted to. Anyway, so... Even though I'm going out, I still have to figure out Meat something for these wrapped two, two by two to eat, and I have no idea what it's going to be. I just will have to look for a sauce and hope it'll simmer in whatever sauce, and that it's not too spicy, or that someone I don't know. It's like I, I don't know, I don't know. And most of the time, by the time it's time for me to cook it, I don't care what we eat. I don't even care. Am I supposed to care? Yeah, I just want it to be over. Yeah, you want it's it to a be half over. hour activity yeah. that takes me three hours of stress to figure out. I hate it. <sighs> yeah. And how about when dinner is in like an hour or even better, Isaac starts getting punchy because he hasn't eaten and you need to feed oh, them he, I and eat, there's no way eats. you can make. I give him pieces of cheese. I give him fruit. I give him pretzels. He'll eat. I can't because Isaac hungry is a, he is constantly nudging if he's hungry and then he'll cry if I don't give it to him. So I have to give him something to eat just so that he'll not be upset. Okay, so I don't know if you remember this, but instead of just crying when they're hungry, do you remember when it was screaming? Like it was angry, mm-hmm. it was calling you mm-hmm. names, it was turning on each other for the siblings. Yeah. It's um it gets ugly. Yeah, it it gets, gets ugly. ugly. And um yeah, I mean, he if he had siblings, he would turn on them. So, I just give him food. <laughs> I just give him more food. So instead he turns on you. Basically just turns on me and nothing is, nothing will satisfy him. So I just give him food and just hope that it will go along with whatever dinner is cooking. Or actually I've gotten wise and I try to have dinner in the oven and almost ready and or ready by the time I go pick him up so that when we walk in the door, I can stuff his face. At 5.30 or 6. Good plan. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Good if it, plan. And sometimes I'll even take him with me to go get the takeout or get the takeout, then get him, then come home. Yeah, well, that way I can plan. just shove him in the chair and put food in front of him right away. I mean, you know, you got to know your kid, right? Yeah, so much to my children's chagrin, I take them to CrossFit three days a week, mm-hmm. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They hate it, but... If you're not playing a fall sport, winter sport, spring sport, guess what? You got to keep moving. If you want Talenti after dinner, you got to keep moving. So Mm -hmm. three days a week, they do that. That's 3.15 to 4.15. So they go after school. They don't want to eat before CrossFit or you'll vomit. Um, So I get them home at 4.15 and they're starving. Yep. So what do I do? Do I give them a snack and then wait till like Seven, almost give them a snack eight? and wait till six. Yeah, six six thirty. I mean, they're growing, so they're not going to care if you give them a small snack. I mean, yeah, that's tough, actually. Yeah, you'd have to eat dinner at like six thirty. Yeah, I want my day to end as soon as humanly possible. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> my dream is to just. Cl- I have this amazing bed, pillow top, pillow bottom. It's super tall. I have a feather bed on top of my mattress and then a super cozy sheet on top of that and a down comforter no matter what the weather. Um, It is 
my happy place. So to crawl into that bed, I want to do it as soon as possible. I'm not saying to go to sleep, but I can knit, watch TV. I can do work. I could do anything from that's my command base. Mm -hmm. So that's my end goal. So if I- Wow, we have that in common too. I could live my whole day in bed. I would be happy never getting out of bed. Was that picture of Isaac you posted in your bed? Yeah, of course. Uh, Yeah, your bed looks like my happy place too. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to get there. And if I feed them a snack at 4.30, 4.40 when we get home, then I have to put dinner off longer, which means- I have to deal. Ugh, I just want well, it to be over. Well, can't you just have dinner at five? That's what we do. Five, five thirty. Yes, but that's when shit goes sideways. That's when <laughs> it's like that's when you put your book on my computer. How am I supposed to see? Why are you standing in my light? What are you looking at? Don't look at my computer. Blah, blah, Can blah, blah, you blah. give them something to do? Send one of them to take the trash out. Send another one to put laundry in so they're not near each other. They would be even more tired. So it would get worse. So yeah, I'll throw out like, I don't know, carrot turds and some sort of dip and hope that distracts them. I'll Mm, clean, I'll put some grapes in the middle. (laughs) Stop. Mm. Does anybody buy full size carrots anymore? No. First of all, yes, because I think the carrot turds taste like turds. I don't buy baby carrots. They taste like shit. I'm bringing back the real carrots i'm taking out the peeler i'm doing the whole i nine don't yards. like those baby carrot bullshits i can't feed that to my children they taste like ass i i will peel a fucking carrot and chop it into twos and give it to him he'll gnaw on it like a rabbit and not even care <laughs> i'd rather <laughs> i'd rather him do just, that <laughs> than eat baby carrots they're on so it. gross so there are good bags and there are bad bags. And I agree. Some of the bags are just, I'll take, I'll eat two of them and just throw the whole bag out. And my kids look at me like, I would have eaten that. I'm like, it's disgusting. But I've never had a bad bag of full size carrots. Exactly. So you're going to the melting pot tonight. I am. Do you like the melting pot? Nobody will go there with me. I will go there. I will stay there with you. I will live there with you. Um, <laughs> my my goal, though, is to avoid an entree. Is that weird? I want salad. I want cheese. And then I want dessert. And then you want chocolate? No, I like the yeah. entree, but that's the part. So like nobody in my family will go there because when you cook the food in the broth, it wafts up and covers you in the smell. Yeah, you totally have to shower, but... Yeah. Well, I guess I feel that way about the outside fire pit too, because now then you smell like char, especially if you have our hair, you definitely absorb Mm -hmm. all of that filth. But that's the reason they won't eat there. Do they know there's a big bowl of chocolate at the end? You know, nobody ever had a problem with the hibachi. I don't know why melting pot has to be such a big fucking deal. Hibachi is pretty gross too, if you think about it in the same way. I mean, you definitely stink like hibachi when you get home. There's no saving that pair of jeans or that sweater for later. Nah, for me, it's the hair. It's really the hair. hair. All of those scents get in my hair. Yeah, yeah. How can you even tell? It's not like you can put your hair in front of your face. Your hair is too short for that. Oh, my God. Jess, I was out in the backyard with these cracked out canines, making sure nobody rolled open stitches in deer feces. Yeah, no, deer shit, which is even worse. Um And while out there, I came back inside. I'm pulling like twigs and a bug out of my hair. Curly haired people will understand. I I can't, you just, you can't see it all the time, but there are some weird bugs out there right now. There's, there's just some twigs falling from trees after storms that I just, I collect things unbeknownst to myself. I collect things in my hair. What? That's horrible. You, you really don't have that problem? Not for a while, but my hair's been short for like two years. You're my hesitating short short far too, too long. Yeah, I guess it does. Yeah. Yes, it collects things. You win. I wonder if John, John collects anything in his hair. hair. I barely have hair. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> he has hair, but not on his head. He's like a furry bear. Yeah, I'm furry from my eyebrows down. Actually, my hair, my hair's got, uh, it's afraid of heights. It goes up to like, I don't know, 5'10". <laughs> I'm I never heard foot. that one. That's funny. Yeah. My hair's afraid of height. That was super funny. I'm impressed. That's adorable. He's Aww. adorable. So like I had something crazy happen to me this past week that I've been wanting to tell you about. I've been waiting and waiting to tell you about it. Please. Because it was so hard not to even text you and tell you about it. I 
had one of Emily's friends hit on me. Shut your mouth. I kid you not. I kid you not. One of Emily's friends reached out and texted me. Somebody who I friended on Facebook seven years ago when I went on Nathan's eighth grade field trip and he was in <laughs> Nate's class. He was 13. <laughs> oh, your laugh. <laughs> Yeah. Eighth grade yep. field trip. Eighth grade field trip. And then he friended me on Facebook. And then and so now here we are seven years later. He's 19, like my son. And he writes me, hey, Miss Jessica, do you know any older women that like younger men? And I wrote back and I was intrigued and stupid as I am. I have no words. So I wrote back, let me see what I can drum up. You did not. I was you just kidding. I don't know any single men that women that like kids his age. I was just kidding, basically. And so I was just like, let me, you know, I figured I would just say, let me see what I can drum up. And then 10 minutes later go, nope, I don't know anyone. So I didn't get a chance to do that because he wrote back, do they look like you? Uh, uh, uh. And then I look at myself because I'm in the car. So I'm in the car at the daycare. <laughs> Did you tell him I that you're just doing this pulled up all over to again? Get Isaac, and I look in the rear view mirror and I have no makeup. I have bags under my eyes. My hair, of course, is fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of me is like double chin, LuLaRoe leggings, which I know you hate. Um, you know, like giant t-shirt. Like I've been working all day. Like I'm exhausted. And I was just like, there is no way he wants. You should a piece have taken a picture from your rear there view no and sent it to way. him and said, "And you- like the giant black glasses, you know, like that oh, make yeah, you I look know. like Iris Apple, those." And so I'm just like, no. Uh, and I just kind of like look at the text. I don't even know what to say back. And then I think, you know, all for the last five or ten years, I've been complaining about being invisible to the opposite sex. I'd like to go back to that now, please. <laughs> Did you take a picture of that and text it no, to him and say, do you I mean like this? Is yeah, this what right. you remember from eighth grade? I should have like made my job of the hut face where you put your chin down in your neck and make as many chins as possible. Does this mean that you've been in his bank since the eighth grade? Oh, why would you say that? Does this mean that... The spank bank. Yeah, that you've been yeah. in his bank since the eighth grade? <sighs> I don't know. Like a vault. I don't know. But here's the worst part. (laughs) The worst part is that um, like a couple months ago, like, so there, do you, are you familiar with the grocery store Jansen's right around the corner from me? It's in Greenville. It's a tiny little like fussy grocery store um, for old people who live in Greenville, like the Bidens. And I was going to say, that's the only person I know you could run into there is Joe Biden. Pretty much. And, and Scott's aunt and uncle but anyway so um he works there and they have like a spread of pre-made stuff for like breakfast and lunch whatever so i've been there for breakfast a couple times and he was running the register and so the second thing i think after i'd like to go back to being invisible is i can never go into jansen's again someone else is gonna have to go in there (laughs) how you doing someone else is gonna have to go in there and get anything i need from there i can never go in again i'm so torn be between being flattered to a degree that I can't even verbalize and horrified. Mm-hmm. I think, no, I think we horrified. need to get, I think we need to get Nate on the phone and tell him about it. Well, how would you, Oh, I told Nathan, he thought it was hilarious. Seriously. And I told Scott, he thought it was hilarious. Scott was like, I knew that was going to happen. I told you that kid had a crush on you. Was this the end of the conversation? No, I don't know anyone. Pretty much. Flatline, nothing else. No bubbles. Nothing no else. No started no, to and type. Scott is odd. No, and my husband is oddly possessive. So I thought that was like tame. I was expecting like, that he what? Didn't... I'll kick his ass. What? Really? Really? I don't see it. Like, I. I don't see Scott getting angry like that, but no, I want to get back to right. the fact he that he probably wouldn't. But I kind of was expecting him to do that. You guys are awfully solid, so I guess I don't. I, I don't think of him that way. He gets upset, like 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 he gets upset, like when I go away. Like if I'm traveling, he'll be like, 
don't talk to any boys. Bye. Well, maybe you should stop posting pictures of yourself in a king size bed sleeping on the diagonal. Who did that? You went away and you stayed in a hotel and you were sick and you just took up all that space. Was it oh. for a podcast yes. retreat of sort? It was. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's much to say to him. I think the answer is uh, um no me? No, thank you. That's what, <laughs> that's what Stuart and I say when somebody goes, gets up, gets themselves a snack, comes back and sits down. And then you make eye contact with them and say, oh, me? No, thank you. Right. Because they didn't right. ask. Right. <laughs> they just went, got a right. snack, got a drink, got whatever they got. Oh, what about me? No, 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 no. Really? Yeah. I'm okay. Right. You tell him I'm Who? Me? me? No, thank you. I don't know if you ever <laughs> saw that. Um, John and I used to do a comic, a comedy show, but I would always talk about how my mother-in-law is constantly asking me questions that require the answer. Who? Me? <laughs> constantly what she, like what give any stamps was one and i would say who me another one are you the only other person in the room no but does that matter why the fuck would i have stamps i don't mail letters who am i mailing a letter to oh. i don't write checks everything is done online why would i have a stamp it just made like i was just like for, we've met i don't I have you, of course you have stamps because you're a little more old school than me but it's I like do. she does know me I don't mail letters unless it's a wedding invitation. That's it. How about thank you notes? Do you ever write thank you notes? I mean, I try to do them online. Even if I were to do that, I would figure out a way to do it online and send them through a system. Like send out cards. Oh, I, Yeah, we have send out cards. That's what I use over the summer when the kids are away for seven weeks. I'll send them yeah. you know, a postcard a week and I still write out letters to no. them. I still maybe someday, but I can't read my but, own handwriting. Another question she asked was, um, "Are you doing any laundry today?" Who me? Who me? <laughs> me? Um, are you? Well, yeah, she was living here at the time. They're all questions so, you could easily turn right back around. Are you? Yeah, that's true. Are you? Do you? Do you? So, for example, when she stole my chicken remember we were talking about the chicken bones she stole the bones from your chicken right but I, what did she I, ask me before then are you going to use these bones uh, who yes me? while cooking them <laughs> 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 who me what do i need them for <laughs> <laughs> for flavor i don't know yes they are my flavor packet for uh. this meal hands on off my bones i mean it was weird right she always asked me questions like that anyway so i forgot where i was going with this about the who me it's it's you i love that i mean part of me just loves that well whatever you're not gonna love it when it's ethan's friends um i've already been told i'm the favorite mom well duh. but it, you're the milf the no 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 oh but god you want it to be because you're hot no. and you're in the spank bank? it's because no. i talk to them i'm funny ish and I yeah, have funny. the best snacks at our house. That's why I'm the favorite mom. No, you're the MILF. Mm, I think so, too. Mm, I, you should see some of these mainline ladies. You and your long legs. Legs for days, Melissa. Well, it's Mallory's friends. I guess, well, so Ethan was on a group video chat studying, air quote, studying for an AP human geography test today. And he, uh, I walk by and I hear, Hamas is brilliant. Hamas is brilliant. Oh, this is brilliant. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> these oh my these God. four little faces so pop cute. into view. I'm like, what's up, guys? What are you doing? Are you studying hard? And then you hear each of them so in their own cute. home fighting with their siblings and parents. And it's, it was a bit much. Um, why do you hate LuLaRoe? So it's not as much that I hate the um, brand. Well, I don't, I have, you mentioned it. I have long legs. Those leggings are not meant, I look like a flamingo They're when not I meant wear for those. You. They are not meant for me. It's not your style. Absolutely not. You are an old Navy all the way kind of girl. I don't want, pa I don't think that was a compliment. I don't want patterns on my legs. I don't want legs to be distracting. Like that's not how, so immediately I don't particularly like the leggings. But what I really am not a fan of, if we had a single listener, this might get me in trouble, but I'm not worried right now. Well, we don't yet. I'm letting yeah. it fly. So all of the moms 
who have decided they are going to rep something, a product, be it jewelry or seasonings and cooking Skin stuff care. or oh dear lord right so right away you went to the one that costs hundreds of dollars yes of course at least lularoe you can get a 20 something pair of t-shirt or a pair of leggings or everything's not astronomical for a piece yeah. of as opposed to that skincare but everybody's decided to rep something and because they're your friends they invite you to a party at their house and because they make some dip and, and a variety of handheld yummies. Your bread? Well, that's the first one that set me off ending a friendship. Not that it was really a friendship, but Ooh, made I it easy. That story. Made it easy for me to stop following a couple of people on Facebook. And I just, I can't, I cannot, you can't start hawking your stuff every time you open your mouth. Like just mm -hmm. stop, be a friend. Or be a salesperson to me. You cannot be both. Yeah. That whole, I, I do agree that that whole entire approach to sales sucks dick. I mean, I guess it works because it is on fire. LuLaRoe is everywhere. I do have a friend who sells. Well, that's because the leggings are like butter. Yeah. Truly. That's the I'm only a reason though. I'm a jeans and t-shirt kind of girl. I'm not happy or comfortable unless I'm in jeans and a t-shirt. Right now, capri jeans and a t-shirt. See, jeans are binding. I'm sick of jeans. I can't. I like leggings, and my leggings are skinnier than my top, so I don't mind drawing more attention to them than the top of me. I find lately. if I wear elasticy, waisty things, it's giving myself permission to give zero fucks about anything that I'm putting inside. So, I don't get me wrong. I have night pants, and I will at four fifteen after CrossFit put on my night pants and night be pants. the happiest I can be. But if I'm leaving the house, I think I owe it to myself, to to my family, to those who care at all to pull my shit together and and leave the house with some sort of some sort of dignity. And I don't nah. feel like <laughs> I just don't feel like putting myself in something that's only lycra from top to bottom. Oh, top to bottom, no. But like Okay, but like right now I'm wearing a pair of very sunny daisy, they're all different color daisies, and a black shirt, like a long black shirt to go with it. I feel like I need to send you a picture to justify my outfit. And to be honest with you, you I, might can't, have to. I have a really hard time choosing what to wear every day. So in addition, the leggings and the leggings and um, cute blousey longer tunic is like a good uniform. Do you mean the Irma? No, I fuck no. I don't buy the so shirts. Is it the I only like the pants. Oh. The Irma is basically a tent. Their shirts are basically like tents. So I like to buy on Amazon these shirts that come in at the waist and skirt out like a little skirty skirt. Sure. And I wear that with leggings. So it almost looks like I'm wearing a dress. Adorable. With leggings. And That's so, adorable. Yeah, yeah, but that but I like all different leggings. I have piano key leggings. I have sushi leggings. I have roses. I have daisies. I have um batik elephants, all with different color tunic dresses that I wear. Because I can't decide elephants. what to wear every day. I spent twenty minutes in there just staring at my clothes. And part of it is I know the weather, but like it's also it's just like with dinner. It's the it's the second worst decision I make every day. For first one being, what the fuck's for dinner? The second one is, what the fuck do I wear? Every fucking day, what the fuck am I going to put on my sad, floppy body today? But if you had a You're pile of You're listening, honey? This is it. This is what you've been spanking it to. <laughs> Write down notes for the next time you whack it out. This is what you, you want get. To tell you want to call him by name? No. I almost did, but no. I like that you called him honey, though. That'll that'll last for another six months. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a pile of, of jeans and I have a pile of T-shirts and some of them have sassy, obnoxious sayings on them. Yeah, and some of them are, I, like are I do have a couple. I do, we used to. We do you remember to, yes. when we wanted to have that? I still have sassy the list. T-shirt line. I still have the list. My favorite one is pickles or cucumbers soaked in evil. I still oh. have it. That's a good t-shirt, you have to admit. Yeah. I mean, I've been collecting them. Yeah. You know, I just got, for my brother, I got a t-shirt that has Smokey the Bear on it. 
Oh. Which is pretty self-explanatory. Yes, but they're, they are coming out with some interesting ones. But I have the one that I was going to get for a mutual friend of ours that says, that's a horrible idea. What time? <laughs> Which I think is adorable. They're they're funny. And I think we saw a whole bunch of them at Old Navy a hundred years ago. And by accident or coincidence, I should say, we both bought the same t-shirts and we both met up wearing a t-shirt that says, who dat with an owl on it. And I who are the other ones? They were so cute. Yeah, I love that shirt. It was, they were so cute. And now Mallory wears all of the t-shirts I've ever owned that were cute and funny. No, the one we had in common was taste like butter. Yes, I had that one as well. Yeah. I, yes. I got to rate, yeah, yes. tastes like butter with a little stick of butter with a happy face. Yes. <laughs> mm, butter. So all of those friends, I did buy a couple of LuLaRoe t-shirts to support my girlfriend. Can you now understand why when I have an arsenal of knit hats and scarves, why I don't approach people and say, would you like to buy? Would you like to buy? I I don't no, like that. I don't, I don't because like that that's whole not what model you're supposed of, to do. You're supposed to put them online and then ship them all over the world. You're not supposed to hack them to your friends at every party. I'm saying you should put them online and let people buy them from you. That was my point. As of right now, my, my hair cutter, she has two towers of them at her place. I drop them off. I refill them weekly if she calls me and then she'll hand me an envelope, which means because I don't value anything that I do, someone else is really selling it for Technically, me. Technically, that's true. But it's Someone else is in charge. Work. And by yeah, the way, I mean, your she's... handiwork is a lot different than a pair of Ursula villain leggings. That's the much different than you taking. Oh yeah, yeah. They came out with the Disney villains, collection. Yeah. That's I mean, right. That's a lot different because you're putting your sweat and soul into them. In my big comfy bed. In your yes. My. Now that I have the full picture, it's even more inviting. Yeah. All of our listeners have the full picture now. <laughs> Did you put the flamingo <laughs> in our show notes, or was that also John? <laughs> He's mean. <That's> funny. <laughs> It's true. I do like flamingos. I mean, it's true. That stuff is... uh, The thing I don't understand about LuLaRoe, at least with Tastefully Simple and Rodan and all that other stuff, you can go on the person's website and do it on your own. With LuLaRoe, it's a whole to-do. First of all, they get boxes. They don't even know what's in them. They can't order anything. It's always a surprise. You can have a terrible box. It's the weirdest model. And then they have to show them in a Facebook group. They have to build their own Facebook group and have like drops. Like they do photo drops in the Facebook group. You have to wait for them to come in and then hope. And so then what do you do with the stuff that doesn't sell? Now you have a room full of shit nobody wants. It's kind of genius. Yes. At, okay. So my girlfriend does this and, you know, she does the come see me at 930. I'll be showing a shop the box. It's called right shop the box. So she opens it up. She takes it out. She hangs it up. And now you look in the back behind her. There are racks and racks of all of the crap that nobody bought from the last shop the box. And for the last year of shop the box, she has thousands of articles like how are you going to sell those do they have a round robin where each person each representative packs up a hundred items from their redonkulous stock and ships it to a different rep just to keep this crap moving and moving because some of these patterns jess are so horrible that they can't be flattering to anyone. No, they can't I, i can't imagine who they would flatter it's just not a good look And I'm going to challenge this one particular rep, a friend of mine, to not use the word love when she presents her next shop the box. I love this one. This one is so gorgeous. Look at these colors. I just love the way this falls. This material is different. I love it. Stop. Just stop. You Why? You think she's killing the... uh... You can't love it. You can't love 90% of what you're saying. First of all, Half that shit is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. This is a tent in a very flashy, bright, multicolored nightmare. Who are you leading astray to buy this? You're not a very good friend if that's what you're doing. It's crazy. Oh, my God. Please don't let her hear this. (laughs) 
I love her so much. Please don't let her hear this. Oh, you love her? I do. You think she's just ruining the word love and that's I think, it? I think that she has no credibility whatsoever. She's not ruining the word love. It still has tremendous meaning to me. You have zero cred- mm. credibility. Nothing. You, your word is nothing. I love this one. It's so beautiful. Look at these gorgeous colors. Stop it. Just stop it. Not the case. And I, I do look like a flamingo in those pants, so you're not off. It's oh, gross. God, I'm going to run the risk. I even lift one leg just to show, just to finish my point. I just lift one leg up. You did? No, I do when I wear things like that. I mean, I have leggings. Some They started out as long underwear. That's the only time I would ever I would ever wear anything that type. But no, I, I do it with a tunic, but I don't try to put, try not to put patterns on them to draw more attention. That's just crazy. Yeah. Look at my legs. Look at my legs. <laughs> I got smiley faces and elephants and flamingos. Look at me. Uh-uh. Black. Don't look at me. Don't you even look at me. I mean, I just, my leggings say, don't look at my stomach. That's what my tunic says. Is that okay? My tunic says, look at anywhere but under here. My stomach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Look away. <laughs> look away. Exactly right. It's my favorite scene from Bridesmaids. Do you remember that? Look away. Look away. Yes. <laughs> She's crapping in Make a sink. Make it no. Make it no. <laughs> Look away. That's my favorite. That's your favorite yes. scene? That scene makes me want to vomit and shit my brains out on myself. I love that she just scre- – I'm already wetting myself laughing. That whole scene, like the walking through the street as, in that in that wedding gown as she gets lower and lower oh, until I'm she just – <laughs> it's happening yes that's the best that whole that whole part is amazing look away yeah it's i great. like her so that's, i like when she freaks out at the bridal shower and calls the lesbians for going to paris together and i also oh, yeah. i also like when when she tries to like take that cookie down in the in the yard you like things that are uncomfortable i do you just like I also things like that are when uncomfortable she's in the airplane yelling at the steward <laughs> okay stove she calls him Steve. It's Steve. It's Steve. What kind of name is that? Whatever. This is the 90s. It's a normal name. It's a regular name. Uh, that's a funny movie. That's a very funny movie. So what else is going on? What are you doing this weekend? Anything fun? Weekend. Woman, it's Tuesday. How could you even think about weekend? Think about weekend? Just like I always I think got, about what's for dinner. You've got a whole week of dinner. You've got a whole week of dinner before the weekend. I don't know who you think you are trying to get past it. This weekend, I was actually supposed to go meet a friend of ours in Mystic, but I couldn't get the hotel and I don't know, too much time has passed. I was supposed to meet Annie up there and it's not looking like it's going to happen. But Mallory has a bat mitzvah. Check this out. Mm -hmm. A camp bat mitzvah she's going to. And after the bat mitzvah, some of these camp families let the camp kids sleep over because they come from far away. Something that we just couldn't manage with only out of town visitors and two kids worth of camp friends. And I, I know my limits, woman. I know them and I'm okay with them. So we did not invite that sleepover. But this Saturday, Mallory's invited to sleep over at the Marriott. Whoa. How do I feel the about that? Yeah, the sleepover is not, not at the house where everybody else has had it. They're having it at a hotel. So she said, bring a bathing suit. Mm. Pardon? So they're going to get home at one in the morning and you just told her to bring a bathing suit? Well, but you um, said she was sleeping over. At the hotel that has a pool. Then why are they coming home at one in the morning if they're sleeping there? She's, oh, I'm sorry. She's going to leave the affair and go to the hotel at one in the morning when it's over and then start swimming then? Let's hope not. Why would they leave at one in the morning? They'll probably leave at like 11. Are you not invited? That's the problem, right? Oh, no, no. I'm not invited. It's our girlfriend from from camp. These are camp friends. So she's going to be unattended in a hotel room after a lavish affair with with a bathing suit on. (laughs) It sounded innocent-ish until you threw in her attire. Um, It didn't really. There are like eight girls. It just sounds like chaos. There'll be probably eight girls, eight girls, some girls in a hotel room. And um, no parents anywhere. I don't know. Right. I don't know the parental situation. Is it local? Not really. Where is it? Closer to Philly, I think. Past 
past Villanova. All right, well, that's so not like, all right. No, it's not, not it's bad. not but Long still. Island, right. I don't know. I don't like it. You don't like it? But well, I'm not saying they're going to get drunk, but they could very easily get in trouble. So if it were the other child, if it were the boy? Yeah, the boy can go. Oh, I go the other way. I would be much more uneasy about that. Mallory is, she's as sharp as a tack. Her friends are inappropriate in ways that I'm still comfortable with, with which mm. I'm still comfortable. Um, and Ethan's friends are not. They've... Oh, they've brought sexuality into. See, the I'm just mix. always of the of the opinion that you never trust the daughter. <laughs> yeah, I could see why you feel that way, um, but <laughs> Mallory yeah, and Emily are very is, different. My my son is eternally innocent, and my it, they, like I've told you, he was the dog and she was the cat. Aww. They're Odie and Garfield, my children, my two older children. You couldn't so, pick like, a more you don't appropriate. trust Garfield. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. never. Unless, especially no. if there's a you don't trust Garfield. plate of lasagna. But you can trust Odie. Odie can be on his own wherever he wants because he's too oblivious to think up something bad to do. So, but wait, if Odie had a pack of dogs that he hung out with, Odie would be like, Fine. all right, I'll 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 go. Let's do that. Okay, we're doing this uh, because he is so easygoing. Ethan's that easygoing. But I think his friend group camp friend group they're more savvy than school friend group Mm -hmm. so i think that um i don't know it could it could turn on me it could i just i just have to trust that they're going to make good choices yeah yeah because i didn't you're right what's the likelihood that that's going to happen i mean the likelihood is less that you'll find out which is what matters Oh. So just let it happen and then just go out drinking and pretend like it's not happening as it's happening. So just shut my eyes to the whole fiasco? I mean, if you really feel like you can trust your children not to smoke crack or whatever, then yeah. I mean, what could they, you know, they know better. I think Stuart comes home from work with enough cautionary tales I'm sure you're of right. shit that goes sideways for them to be at least reluctant, you know, yeah. initially and share a story or two about about horrible things after one try like it just takes once it really does so that's what we try to drill into their foreheads yeah i don't know how well that's working i don't know but i mean i think it's okay what's the worst thing you ever did as a kid like at that age bar mitzvah age really 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 at that age what do you mean i think the worst thing i did before high school before high school right they're yeah, not well, in high school, e- right? Ethan's Ethan's in high school, but Mallory's oh, in different. eighth grade. All right. So, so the worst thing I did in eighth grade was have people over my house and my parents weren't there. And of course I got caught. My mother came home right in the middle of me ordering a pizza. And it was like a hundred kids in my house. And she was furious. But nobody was drinking. They were just in all our stuff, like all over the house. But nothing bad. So you're right. Now I understand why you wouldn't trust Ethan. Now, ninth grade was a totally different story. Ninth grade, I skipped school to go to Baltimore with a kid that didn't have a license and four of my friends. Ninth grade was when I learned how to smoke cigarettes. Ninth grade was um, prank calling. Ninth grade, I got in trouble for dialing too many 900 number new kids on the blocks. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got in a yeah, lot of Yeah, I guess I called, um, what's his name? Daniel LaRusso. I called him because he was from my hometown. Danny LaRusso, so karate kid. Yeah. Ralph Macchio. Yeah, lived lived not far from me growing up, so we called him all the time. Uh, his like mother his probably. his actual home or like yeah. a 900 number? No, no, his actual home. His mother was furious. Enough, oh girls! <laughs> she had had enough. She had had enough. Oh yeah. my god! It's amazing she didn't change her number or block you. Or Eventually, something. I'm sure she did, but it was no. I don't think there was blocking. But is hey, is Danny Larusso there? <laughs> <laughs> it's still funny. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. hilarious! It was fun. But, I mean, so we did. You're right. We did prank calling. You know the things that I did that were not great when I was their age kind of happened to me in the way that I think it's going to happen with Ethan. It wasn't my idea. I think if I had a real good choice, I probably would have said no, thank you. But None of I it wound was my up. Idea, but I wound up in Central Park during the Simon and Garfunkel concert of what eighty five. Mm-hmm. Come on, I'm what thirteen. Who me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just. Yeah, I was fifteen and ended up in the parking lot of a dead show at RFK Stadium, and that was not my idea, but it was really fun. 
Um, but I got in big trouble because I'd never taken the subway before. I didn't drive. My parents had no idea where I was. I didn't have tickets to the concert. We just walked well, around and like, met a lot concert. of hippies. No, yeah, it was you don't need so tickets fun. for a dead show. Yeah. No, it was so fun. So, I mean, that's kind of the worst stuff. I mean, the wor- the really, really bad stuff didn't come till college. So I think you're okay. No, that's not even true. I drank like a fish in high school towards the end. And I drove when I wasn't supposed to. And I spent the night in places and lied to my parents. All right, I'm just very, freaking you I out now, I was now, a much better kid than you were. I was a much better kid than you were. Yeah. You see, were a I bad girl. I knew what was coming for me. I knew when I had a daughter what was coming. I knew it was like Sherry's revenge. I called Emily for a long time Sherry's revenge <laughs> because my mom was Sherry because I knew I deserved her. And actually what she used to say to me as a kid was worse. She would say, when you grow up, I hope you have all boys. And that was like the curse, right? But meanwhile, she had no idea what a blessing it was. She was like ble- like cursing me with all boys, but they're so much easier, my God. Boys are so much – not just because of Emily because Emily was tough, but because boys are just – in my opinion. Don't you think or you don't think Ethan's easier? You know, it's different. I, I also think kids are different. When it comes to talking about sexuality with your children, I think boys are easier because mm-hmm. you really just need to teach them to be respectful, ask permission. Here's a box of condoms. With a girl, there's so much more involved in – feelings, um, respect herself. I mean, I, I don't know if I have mentioned this to you, but last before this past summer, I had a conversation with Mallory about, oh, I don't even know. I can't even, it's so hard to say. I had a conversation with my daughter <laughs> about oral sex. Oh, and, no. And, well, wait. <laughs> stop the clock. So, she says to her brother in a conversation oh. I overhear, this one from camp has already blah, 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 oral <gasps> sex. And I choked on my own saliva. Oh my God. They were actually in the, in the swimming pool. We go away with them before camp and after camp because we want to build family before and we want them to tell us everything afterwards. I don't oh want their little God. friends to hear the stories. I want it all right here. Come here. <laughs> so come closer. So... I heard this and I, I almost threw up, but I, I crawled into the pool. It's just our family there. And I said, well, what does that mean? Because I've definitely learned mm-hmm. they say things and they don't always know the meaning right, and the things right. they say. So taking it slow, what, uh, what, uh, what does that, what does that mean? Oh, uh, well, this, she was, this one was on FaceTime with that one. And either oh, she no. said, yeah. So they were That's oral talk- sex now? Yes, they were talking about and maybe she she might have taken <laughs> her shirt God off and asked. talked it, right? Well, no. Don't you would say that if I had good judgment, but my judgment has always been I don't know, poor at best. So I said, "Look, I want you to know before you say that again, that is not what oral sex is, and you have a choice. You can never use that in again, because that is not at all what that means, or you can find out what it means from mommy from, and, and at least know, and at least know the words you're using. Oh my God. So she says, oral sex was, what does it mean? (gasps) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So. This is this is when my husband slowly gets up and starts walking out of the pool because he's not allowed to educate We're our children on anything. He's a doctor. Yes, but but that's going to be a conversation about, you know, his he gets very technical um with Mallory and very giggly with with Ethan. So I can't have him <laughs> educating our children. At all. He becomes a 10-year-old boy with my 14-year-old son and he becomes, you know, a professor at Harvard. Oh. God with Mallory. Stew. So so I slowly um craft a discussion around fellatio. Oh my god. Right. So so now my son <laughs> So now my son is leaning in, right? Um there's nobody else at the pool. I feel comfortable doing this, disgusted, but comfortable. And I I explain 
How right. far did you get? Did you get into grapefruiting or no? Oh my god. I'm gonna <laughs> just You know this I'm is my kidding. daughter, right? I'm joking. So, so I, I discussed Did you tell her about gag reflex and No, stop. With stop. The balls? It's not a it's not a how to. <laughs> this is not a how to. It is a what is. Oh my lord. So I explain it and then and then I'm about so she's like, Oh my god, mom. Too soon, too soon. I'm like, well, then shut up and stop saying these things. And then as I'm getting out of the pool, I realize that's not all oral sex is. That's Uh-oh. just one way. You are completely missing the oh my god! You didn't side tell him about the other way. Sex. You only told her about giving. Well, that's what she was talking about. So I said, "By the way, child, that is just the giving for a woman." Which, P.S. You are not yet. <laughs> by the way, oh, um, there is god, also Melissa. There is also receiving, and that is. She goes, "Please don't, please don't, <laughs> mom, please don't." I said, "Well, when you're ready to hear receiving." It's it Don't goes ask both me. It goes both who me? It goes both ways. Whoa we'll here. So Oh my God. She later came over and said, So wait, boys do what to Yeah. So we had the whole conversation and then Stuart oh said, I'm God. really proud of you. You did a really good job of not crying, <laughs> screaming, freaking out, and just Laughing. just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. So she is scarred i don't know how else to she's i'm scarred yeah so she, if you're Your gonna daughter say knows it, about giving and receiving oral sex where did ethan go was he there for oh this? no he was he was leaning in he wanted it he wanted to hear he wanted to hear everything i mean so, i find out but he had no reaction to this um he was the most quiet i've ever heard him actually <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he might have actually pulled out a pen and paper at oh one point God. drawn a picture and taken notes my god did you mention yeah. about i mean how far into detail did you this is too vague for me i just the facts know, just the facts what that i mean did you start with when a man likes a woman they when decide to kiss each other there or did you say put it no. in your mouth and don't let go until rain happens like what did you say exactly neither one of those p.s <laughs> Mental notes here. Well, let me type this up. Do not By let the my way, children I've never near said Jessica those. Kupferman. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said either one of those. I, I've never said any of this to my children, by the way. Yeah. Well, I've figured out that my son and his camp friends and friends, whatever, have discovered porn. So my mm. job with him so is they to know what say, it is. my job with him at least is to say, that's not real. Girls don't like that. Girls don't do that. Nobody wants that in their face. Like yeah. I have. Please don't slap her with that. <laughs> that is that is not right. Remember that part where I said ask Girls permission. Girls don't want to dress respect. like that. Nobody has nails like that. Nobody wears that. That is not comfortable. And that position is redonk. That is yeah. not even an option. Right. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Ugh. That's terrible. Ugh. I don't know it how my children learned about it, but it must have been the internet because they already kind of knew everything i mean i explained i mean these conversations the the way that i was good was when they were young and they asked me stuff like what's a pimp because of pimp my ride they were eight when they were watching that it's like bedazzling Mm -hmm. bedazzle my ride i told them what a pimp was i don't want them to find out anytime they've ever asked me a question i've been honest because i don't want them to find out later from someone else the truth and then come back to me and think i'm a liar so maybe so. mallory was six and she saw grease and she said mom what does it mean that riz has got a bun in the oven oh yeah all right did you tell oh, her well, yeah of course come on i just told now, you what i told my daughter about what... when the chicks will cream it's scream it's you're wrong no, that's it's not the not. lyric <laughs> yes but when they redo it it is scream the chicks will scream they she doesn't know those lyrics but oh. so i tell her that and she, so we're seeing it in a play actually so she leans over and says i told her it means that she's pregnant and later like maybe a full minute she leans over and says but riz isn't married to kaneki i said you are correct 
could you watch the play? <laughs> could you <laughs> shut up and watch the play? Hey, Mal, save all these questions for when this is over. I would love to talk to you about this. Yeah. The play ends. We get in the car. Did you have any questions? Nope. I got it. I'm good. Nope. Really? She's five. Like, why? Tell, ask me anything you want. I'll tell you, hopefully, on your level. Although I do think that pool discussion, I th- yeah, she was 12 before the summer. She's 13 now, but she was 12 when finding out about oral sex. My point was before, wow. before I dog-legged into unnecessary vomit from my mouth, that boys need to be taught to respect their bodies, women's bodies, and ask permission. Consent is the ABCs, like absolutely consent. Mm-hmm. And girls... I mean, I remember telling my parents about a boy I knew I was in love with. Like, I I was in love. He told me he loves me. He feels the same way. Like, there's no, there's no reason or rationalization or it's all emotions. I don't think boys have that. So to fight that on the girl side, I definitely think girls are harder to go through this this state. Oh, and hormones? This stage, this phase. I think they have it. You think Nate has it? Yeah. I just you think, think Nate has what? First of all, Nate is a cancer with cancer rising and a cancer moon. So he has it. He is. Yeah. A, he to is me, a, that's all nonsense. But I hear you. I'm a cancer as well. But that's I. Mm-hmm. Nate, Nate uh, has lots of Nathan did this whole thing in high school where he liked this girl who was a foreign exchange student. She couldn't even speak English. And he really liked French her. French fries? The, I French think she was bread? Spanish, but they rode the bus together every morning. He was like a sophomore. They rode the bus together every morning, and then come Valentine's Day, he wants to give her a bouquet of flowers. And his father and I are both like, "This is a terrible idea. She doesn't even know you." And he was like, "I have to do it. It's Valentine's Day, and I love her." And I oh was my like, God. "You can't do this." I'm like worried that she's going to call the police on him. I'm worried that she's going to, you know, not understand. I don't even know if they have Valentine's Day in Spain, although that's stupid. Of course they do. But like, I'm just like, hey, are you sure you don't want to just give it to someone? Or, and he was like, no. He picked out the flowers. He got on the bus. She, and, and he said she loved them and gave him a big hug and said thank you. And that was it. He just wanted to give her the damn flowers. I was like, you can't expect anything from her. She may not like you. He was like, I don't care. I'm giving them to her. He was like, it was two weeks of of us badgering him about it. Uh, it It's truly amazing what we will do to prevent our children from getting hurt. I know. And he wasn't even hurt. I don't think he expected anything. He just really wanted to give her a Valentine's Day present. Yeah, but you didn't know that. You didn't know what was coming. In fact, odds are the reaction that you had in mind that was coming was probably more realistic because certainly it was more likely than thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you just tried to prevent him from getting hurt. Don't do that. How how about a card? How about just a card? How about one flower? How about subtle? (laughs) If you don't know. So that's like Stuart will go out somewhere and he'll see someone and he's like, I think that person's name is. And I tell him, if you don't know, shut up, do not use their name. Yeah. Because if you are wrong, Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. They then have to either correct you, which embarrasses both of you, say nothing, which just embarrasses them until later you figure out that's not their name. And then you're just shush. Yeah, you, don't need, you don't need to use people's names. I talk about my, <laughs> talk to my in-laws all the time without saying their names. It's, hey, you, who me? Like it's a whole, right. there's no, it's, please, if you don't know it, don't say it. Shush. One flower. Yeah. Be subtle. If you don't know that it was a giant bouquet of lavender Ugh. roses. Already, I'm uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable. She loved it. But Who it wouldn't? So I mean, that's lovely. That's terrible. lovely. I'd love that too. Oh my god! It was yes, terrible. please. As a mother, yes, it was please. like the most terrible. It was one of the it was one of the it most is. traumatizing parental experiences of my life, and it was just so innocent. Just want to protect them. Any hooser. Well, from oral sex. <laughs> I mean. What a convo. Go eat a dick. <laughs> there you go. The end. It's my favorite. <laughs> the end. We've gotten from dinner all the way to dessert with this conversation. I'm hoping the dessert wasn't oral sex. It was, was it? as a matter of fact. Mm. And was- you're going to have a bowl of chocolate tonight. How could it not uh, be? I'll um, meet you there. No. Yeah, I would love for you to come. But it's with us, somebody you don't know. Who um, cares? You don't think I could eat cheese and chocolate with somebody I don't know? 
Well, then you're what welcome What a low come. opinion you must have of me. I have a great opinion of you. We wouldn't be doing this mm. show. Mm. Stay away from my chocolate. Yeah. Oh, that's why you don't want me to come. You don't want to share. We'll go another time. We'll go another time. Yeah, but you said it. Once you go, you can't go for like six months. Like you need I some can. time to I get to get that smell out of your parts. I haven't been in years. It's been so long. Oh. I've not been in so long. We'll go for your birthday or mine. Mine's coming up. We'll go for mine. What are... What am I having for dinner tonight now that you're eating well? That's a great question. What are you having? Damn it. We can have leftover meatballs and cavatappi. Mm. Oh, I have a tip for you. I have Mm. a tip for you. So yesterday was my wedding anniversary. Been married 18 years. Oh, my God. Happy anniversary. No. There you go. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. I'll be here all week. Try the veal. Um, So... Stuart has a friend who's very sick. Long story. He went, oops, not there. He went, to, he went to go visit him and I, I made this dinner, right? So I get the phone call from his parents without him being here. And his parents are singers. And by singers, I don't mean professionally. I mean, if it's your birthday, they're going to sing to you. If it's your oh, right. anniversary, they're going to sing to you. If you woke up, they're going to sing to you. Great. If you took a dump, they're going to sing to you. Awesome. The last two are mostly for the children and not for the grownups, but they have a song for it. So they call and they say, are you two enjoying a wonderful val- uh, anniversary together? Is it a great? No, no, no. He's actually in Manhattan visiting a, a friend who's pretty sick. And here I am by myself making dinner. And nope, they're not having it. They sang to me anyway. They couldn't let it go. We're going to call him in the car on his way home and sing to him too. So I got a song yesterday and I want to tell you what I learned from my mother-in-law, most valuable lesson besides here's my son. When you have a salad with your dinner and you need to store it afterwards, do not use a Ziploc bag. Use Tupperware. There. You're welcome. Why? It keeps be- It just keeps better. It seals and keeps better. You get lettuce juice in the, Ew, um, in the Ziploc, juice. which is right. That's a it's good gross. name for a podcast. <laughs> lettuce ju- lettuce juice that's a good oh, name like for it. a rock band lettuce dish is better lettuce dish <laughs> um oh so that is. so that's a the, here's your fun tip for today if storing lettuce salad whatever use tupperware you're welcome mm-hmm. and on that note on that note let's wrap it up thank you guys so much for listening to the reservations podcast to reservations with me i'm jessica and this and melissa hey and we will see you next time. Join us at reservationspodcast.com, I think is our website. Try it if it's not. Curse us and come back and hear us again. Yep. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a Bye. great day.